In this video, you are going to learn how to express the trigonometric ratio of, uh, of any angle in a quadrant as the ratio of an acute angle. So for example, if let's say you have a sine 150 degrees. So 150 degrees is an obtuse angle, but we want to express this obtuse angle as an acute angle. So that means we are going to express sine 150 as sine 30 degrees. And if you press calculator, you will find that sine 150 degrees is equal to sine 30 degrees. But of course, this is not always true. For example, 150 cosine is not the same as cosine 30 degrees. Okay, but it is related. So at the end of this video, you are going to learn how to express the ratios that are greater than 90 degrees as the trigonometric ratios that of acute angles. Alright, so let's start off with the definition of an angle in a quadrant. We define the side angle as the ratio of the y over r. The y is the y coordinate of the point and r is the distance between the origin and the point. So r is a distance, whereas x and y are the coordinates of the point p. And cosine theta is defined as x over r. As you can see, if my theta is this angle, my sine will be the opposite over the hypotenuse, whereas my cosine will be this x, which is the adjacent over the hypotenuse r. And then we will have our tangent theta is equal to opposite y over adjacent x. So remember how we are going to get all these trigonometric ratios of the angles because there our angles theta can always be an angle that's larger than uh, 90 degrees that can fall into the second, the third or the fourth quadrant. And just to tie up our R, which is the distance between the O and the point P can be found using the Pythagoras theorem taking x squared plus y squared and square root the whole. Let's look at this uh, example. So let's say I have a point P with a coordinates of 2, 3. And this, the line that joins the origin to the point P will have an angle of theta measuring from the positive x-axis. Now, I want to write down the trigonometric ratios of the angle theta where, ang where theta is an acute angle. Taking this point P, where my theta is enclosed by the line from O to P, my sine theta would be opposite, which is the Y, so that would be 3 over the hypotenuse R, but I will need to find the distance R using Pythagoras theorem. Here, R will be 2 square plus 3 square square root. So that will give me a 4 plus 9 square root equal to root 13. And my sine theta will be 3 over root 13. Cosine theta would be my x value that will be 2 over hypotenuse root 13 and tangent theta will be 3 over 2. So that's for part A where theta is acute. In part B where my angle theta falls into the second quadrant, my sine theta would be again opposite that would be 3. Opposite is here, 3. This is minus 2. Okay, because we are looking at the coordinates. 
So my sine theta would be the y, which is 3, over the hypotenuse, which is root 13. For cosine theta, it will be minus, minus 2 over root 13. And tangent theta will be 3 over 3 over 2. So of course we want to simplify. We always want to take out the negative sign out of the fraction, out of the numerator or the denominator. So we writing that I will have these two values for my cosine and tangent for an angle that fall into the second quadrant. Now we want to find the trigonometric ratio of an angle that fall into the third quadrant. For, for the sign of this theta, it will be the y over the hypotenuse, which is root 13. And I will want to rewrite the negative out of the fraction. Cosine theta is the x And tangent theta is y over x. That will means I have the negative 3 over negative 2. And the negative signs cancels away. For the last part, uh, I will give you some time. So please pause the video and fill up the trigonometric ratios of sine, cosine, and tangent. After you are done with that, you can continue with the video to check your answer. The last part D, the theta falls into the fourth quadrant, and my sine theta would be y over hypotenuse. My cosine theta is 2 over root 13, and tangent theta is minus 3 over 2. So if you look at A to D, there is pattern. The pattern is that the fraction or the magnitude is always the same. Considering the points, considering that the point P have the same magnitude, our this fraction is always the same. Looking here, you find that our sine theta is the same as sine theta in B. That means for, for the sine of an angle in the first two quadrants, they will be the same. So in other words, sine 150 degrees, which is in the second quadrant, will be the same as sine 30 degree, where 30 degree is the acute angle in the first quadrant. How does this tie up? Let's say I have this line where the angle is 150 degrees. If we go and obtain the acute angle, which is 30 degrees, sine of 150 would be the same as the sine of 30 degrees. And the magnitude and the sine is the same for both. Uh, ratios but for cosine you see that here you have positive 2 over root 13 for part B is negative 2 over root 13 how does that tie up it means if I have a cosine 150 degrees it will be equal to negative cosine 30 degrees because in the second quadrant cosine is a negative so with, with this magnitude, this cosine 150 degrees would have the same magnitude as cosine 30 degrees. But since cosine 150, but since 150 degrees is in the second quadrant, that means the cosine of this 150 degrees would have a negative value. So you need to add 
a negative sign to the fraction to the value of the ratio let's look at tangent so in the same way if I have 150 degrees here and this is 30 degrees a tangent of 150 degrees would have the same magnitude as the ratio of its acute angle but because there is a negative of tangent in the second quadrant we have to add a negative now look at part C and D the idea is the same say we have this third quadrant for part C let's put this angle as 240 degrees okay 240 degrees is uh, will lies in quadrant C the acute angle is this particular angle so what is the value of this particular acute angle it will be 240 degrees minus 180 degrees so that will give you a value of 60 degrees that means sine the magnitude of sine 240 degrees will give you the same magnitude as sine 60 degrees the magnitudes are the same but you have to look at the sign are they the same or not for quadrant C the sign of an angle in quadrant C would have a negative that means you need to put a negative here you can carry on this analysis for cosine and tangent and also the and also do this for the fourth quadrant the idea is the same 